Make sure to use code BANGLE at sign up on FanDuel for a $20 deposit bonus. And check out my second channel for other games coming up like Red Dead Redemption 2 and Call of Duty Black Ops 4. As well as my third channel with collaborations with some of your favorite YouTubers. Let's get into the video. What's going on guys? Bengal again here coming back at you with another video today. Back doing another rebuild. Today this is the realistic Tennessee Titans rebuild. As we try to find out, is Marcus Mariota the answer at quarterback? And uh, that doesn't look like Mike Vrabel. Because <laughs> it's not. Because he's not signed with the coaches union. Alright, so of course this is a realistic rebuild. Which means we will be using my draft class. Bengal 2019 draft on PS4. Feel free to download it. It is in the Madden share. Give it a thumbs up when you do. So more people can hopefully use it. And what position do we need? Well, I mean, we're the Titans, so wide receiver could be on the board and play. I think we might take a look at a uh, at outside linebacker, specifically edge rusher. And there are some good ones in this class. Jalen Jelks being one of them, even though he's listed as a run stopper. Same thing with Anthony Jennings. All right, seven and six right now in a position to potentially make the playoffs. We're not actually that far out. This is the lineup. Taylor Lewan, Quentin Spain, Ben Jones, Josh Klein. Well, it is Josh. I don't know why it feels like it isn't. Josh Klein, uh, Jack Conklin, of course. Delaney Walker uh, at receiver. We have Taewon Taylor, Corey Davis, Tajay Sharp. I don't even know who Batson is. Cameron Batson. Okay. Of course, Deion Lewis, Derrick Henry, Jeremy McNichols. Um, and apart from Jeremy McNichols, Marcus Mariota, the Blaine Train, Blaine Gabbert, of course, Janu Smith, Luke Stocker. I mean, it's a decent offense. It's nothing crazy. We've obviously seen a lot better. If I had to improve something in offense, it would be receiver. It would be certain pieces on the offensive line. But overall, fine, I would say. I would say offense is fine. I'm not really looking to make any drastic improvements aside from wide receiver. On the defensive side of the ball, it's a little bit of a different story. I love Kenny Vaccaro, hook him horns, but I don't know if he's in our long-term future at strong safety, given his age now. He is 27 with quick development. Of course, as you guys may know, regression hits at 28 years old in Madden for whatever reason. I think it's just a little bit early. It made 29, 30, and yes, the one year or two years makes a lot of difference. And he's only an 83 overall. Not really sure what his ceiling would be. I don't think very high. I don't think even 85. Jonathan Cyprian's also here. He's 28 years old. Same boat with him. Even a worse situation, in my opinion. And then with Brian Arakpo, another Texas Longhorn, being as old as he is at 32. We're going to have to find a replacement there. He and Derek Morgan are both free agents at the end of the year, I believe. Harold Landry's a beast. Kamale Correa is also decent. And the inside, Wedley, uh, Wesley Woodyard is old at this point. He's 32. We need to replace him. It's a good thing we have Rashawn Evans. Jayon Brown and Will Compton also here, but I don't really want to rely on Jayon Brown. Rashawn Evans is cool. And then a cornerback, we have Adoree Jackson, Logan Ryan, Malcolm Butler, LaShawn Sims, and Ty Smith out of Tosin State. I didn't even know there was a Tosin State. It was just Tosin. Regardless, on the defensive line, Jarrell Casey, Benny Logan, uh, Detone, not Detone Jones, Daquan Jones, excuse me. And then, uh, I mean, like, Darius Kilgo and uh, Austin Johnson. Only 24 years old. It's not terrible, to be fair. But we do probably want to improve at outside linebacker, at inside linebacker, at various areas of the secondary and the defensive line. It's an average team, in my opinion. We are going to simulate to the playoffs, though. See if we make it. So, of course, we did make the playoffs. I'm not going to jump in at any point. It's only season one. Titans were a very highly requested team, though, as we simulate, see if we can beat the New England Patriots, and we do 27-20. Now the Chiefs to advance to the conference championship. Not going to happen. We only lose by a touchdown, 21-14. Not too bad, considering, as Marcus Mariota is here. Pretty good season for him. Blaine Gabbard also got way more involved than I would have liked. Derrick Henry was incredible. Because his yards per carry is so boosted because of that insane game. Including a 99-yard run. In my opinion, and I think Titans fans will agree with this, he is not a very good running back. And I know, it looks like he's having a great season now. He is not a very good running back. 
he doesn't play like he's 6'3", 250. He doesn't play like Brandon Jacobs played in his prime. He plays more like Deion Lewis. He's like the most dainty 250-pound running back I've ever seen. And the only one I've really ever seen is Brandon Jacobs. They don't build him like this, but he doesn't play like that. It's a little bit annoying because it looks like wasted potential. But he's, he's getting better, maybe. So, I mean, we'll see. Receiving Corey Davis has been having a great season, and he continued that. Most of the other receivers, I mean, nothing really doing. Offensive line was incredible. I almost wonder if Sachs didn't register if they're not uh, input in the uh, in the game as we you know simulated at this point. As Wesley Woodyard led our team in tackles. No big tackle for loss numbers. Jarrell Casey with eight sacks. He's one of the most underrated players in the league. I didn't mention that, but it's true. Seven and a half for Jayon Brown from middle linebacker seems odd. I guess he's playing a lot. Are we operating in like a 4-3 multiple system? Because Brian Arakpo is getting no pressure. Our outside linebackers are getting no pressure. I need them to play as edge rushers. We might be in for a scheme change as Dory Jackson leads their team in interceptions with five. And then defensive touchdowns, none. We'll check out awards. We had the 26th ranked offense in the league. Not great. And then the fifth defense. So I guess we perform well defensively as Pat Mahomes wins the MVP. No Titans in there. Not exactly a big shock. ASU Offensive Player of the Year is Pat Mahomes. Marcus Mariota in there at number 10. Defensive Player of the Year is Darius Leonard. Probably led the team or led the league in tackles. Dory Jackson at 8. Shocker, actually. Baker Mayfield wins Offensive Rookie of the Year for the AFC. No Titans. Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to Darius Leonard. Not a huge shock there. As uh, we, again, have nobody in there. But can we start any rookies on defense? Mm, just Harold Landry, as far as I can tell. And Rashad Evans. All right, so two. Kenny Vaccaro is an impending, well, I guess he's a free agent now. It's the next stop. He still stays an 83 overall. He's down from quick to normal. Brian Arakpo, one of my favorite players in the league. Top 10, I'd been. I gotta let you go, buddy. Quentin Spain is gonna be a resign. Benny Logan is gonna be a pass. Quentin Spain's back. Do I want to bring back Kenny Vaccaro? Like, another guy that's been one of my top 10 favorite players in the league with Brian Arakpo. You guys catch a trend. A lot of Texas players. Um, but he just doesn't bring much to the table for me. High pursuit, good speed. He's an in-the-box safety. He's a backup. That's what he is for me. And I'm going to sign him as a backup. I guess, I guess he's getting backup money, so I'm, I'm kind of cool with that. Yep, Kenny Vaccaro is re-signed. I know like 3.7 per year or whatever he got overall isn't like big backup money, right? Like that's still pretty good. But that's what it's going to be for us. He's going to be a rotational player like I, I, I guess Jayon Brown was for some reason. Le'Veon Bell's here as is Verrett. As are the same players that we see every time. Daryl Williams is here. There just isn't a need to sign him. NFL draft time. We are picking at number 25 overall. We'll see who's on the board. As I said, I want to improve at edge rusher, wide receiver, potentially safety, although that could probably wait till next year. Cornerback, maybe. Even defensive tackle. I still haven't decided what scheme we're going to run. I don't know what I want here. I think we're going to take Christian Wilkins out of Clemson. 79 overall defensive tackle with quick development. We haven't been in a position to draft him before, so we are going to. Really good player out of Clemson, and it's certainly good value here late in the first round. This is too much for me to ignore. Another great Clemson defensive lineman here, Dexter Lawrence, as we start the Clemson duo. Welcome, Dexter Lawrence, the Tennessee Titans. 75 overall quick development. Jalen Jelks is here in the third. I am in on Jalen Jelks. Welcome. He has real bad speed. 73 overall, normal development. 78 for that move. Eh, he's, he's okay. Not great. He's a player we don't draft all the time. We're late here. This will be my last pick. We never get a manual haul. I mean, like, he's not that good in this, so... He's 434 speed, 74 overall, normal development. That's actually not bad. That's better than I remember making him. I mean, he's not terrible, but, you know, I'm going to represent their speed 
to what I believe is accurate. And he, he is a little bit of a burner. Decent draft for us. The CPU even drafted Karan Higdon out of Michigan. Not that we needed another running back. But, uh, all right, I guess it works. I think we're going to change up the defense in a really, really big way. I think we're going to transition into a 3-4. Like, more so than we are already. Or, ooh, we could go 4-3. That might even, mm, how, That doesn't really fit with personnel. Because Jarrell Casey would be a defensive tackle in a 4-3. That's what he would be for me. D-tackle. Daquan Jones would be a D-tackle. I just feel like we're not... We're playing... Yeah, I don't want to do multiple 3-4. I want to be base 3-4. We're going to move to base 3-4, which means I'm going to change the playbook to uh, LAR, probably. Los Angeles Rams. That is their base 3-4. Hopefully that gets us a lot more edge pressure as we're in a more traditional system that's not going to have guys like Jayon Brown playing a ridiculous amount of the time. Like, why was that? I don't know. Jalen Jelks is kind of a weird one. Jayon Brown had like seven and a half sacks last year, though. What are your ratings? Can I play you on the outside? Like, no. How do you have seven and a half sacks with 61 finesse move? Like, what do you... I don't know. Simulation stats are so broken, in my opinion. It happens all the time where just nothing really makes sense at all. And Wesley Woodyard is not going to play. You know who's going to play? Jayon Brown is. Can I cut you? Yeah, absolutely. Sorry, Wesley Woodyard. I used to love you in Denver, and you are gone now because you don't have any value to me. That's what it comes down to. Jayon Brown had a great season. Jayon Brown's going to start. Austin Johnson really doesn't bring anything to the table for me. He's not particularly good. He's a decent age, but he he doesn't, he doesn't really give me any type of real skill. What does Dexter Lawrence do for me that he doesn't? He has quick development. He's younger. He can actually get after the quarterback with great interior pressure. His block shed should be way higher. I kind of screwed him up. Is uh, I know he's like great interior pressure for someone that's 350, but I should have. I didn't do that correctly. It was uh, a lot of work to get the draft class going, so I see a lot of things that I don't like sometimes. Not a lot, but it is. Mostly with the late round guys, but Dexter Lawrence is someone that could go in the first round. So, I wish I got him more accurate. Something I will definitely go back and change at a later date. Ooh, Delaney Walker retired. That sucks. Jonu Smith is now the starting tight end. I mean, he's fast. That's what he was coming out of FIU. He is the same player. He has not changed since being drafted. He's just fast. He blocks all right. What is his blocking in-game? Because he's a pretty good inline blocker. 62. Uh, uh, I don't know about all that, Swami. What is going on at running back here? How is Deion Lewis in 86? No, I'm not going to... Why can I not... They're not letting me change it. Henry is not going to start at fullback. I don't want... Karan Higdon to start a fullback, but that's what's happening now. Because Deion Lewis is not going to be my starting running back. It's going to be Derrick Henry. I want him to be the bell cow. Not Deion Lewis. This is going to be the team for season number... I guess technically it's three, right? I have no idea. But, uh, this is the squadron on defense. I mean, it's, it's alright. It's still like average-ish to me. Adore Jackson's getting a lot better. He's up to an 88. And we got a pretty decent group. Now it's about time we come out here and compete. I will see you to mid-season mark. This is actually season two, right? Yeah, yeah, season two. I'm not I'm not wild already in season three. No way. We are two and five at the mid-season mark. Let's get it. Killing it. Colt seven and one. Love it. All right, well, uh, Josh Klein, Ben Jones are regressing. Hate to see that. So we're going to need to improve on the interior offensive line with the guard in the center. Kevin Byer, Derrick Henry. Oop, Mar Marcus Mariota is free agent. Probably should re-sign him. Logan Ryan, Jack Conklin, Brett Kern. Probably out on Tajay Sharp. But, uh, yeah, these top guys, like, we really need these players. They're, 
imperative to the success of our organization. Brett Kern and everyone to the left, including Jack Hunt and Logan Ryan, Marcus Mariota, Derek Henry and Kevin Byard resign. Welcome back. So we continue to lose games. We are 2-5 and five right now. I don't expect that to improve, I'll be honest with you. We definitely did not make the playoffs. We finished 7-9, and nine, though. That's what, the, you know... <laughs> yes. Yes. I won't explain why, but if you, you'll, you'll know if you know. Yes. That is the... Yep, yeah, that's perfect. Rams beat the... Or nope. Rams lose to the Chargers. That's how numbers work. The team with the least amount of points loses. Okay. Mariota had a great season. 4,500 passing yards, 37 touchdowns, 7 interceptions. Rushing Derrick Henry was okay. Deion Lewis was pretty good. Receiving Corey Davis and Emmanuel Hall. Emmanuel Hall. 14 touchdowns and over 1,000 yards. We had 3 receivers with 80 catches. What a weird group there. Dennis Kelly is frightening to look at. We're going to not do that anymore. Jayon Brown led our team in tackles. Nice number of tackles for loss. 10 for Christian Wilkins. Quarterback sacks, 10.5 for Jarrell Casey. Interceptions is 5 for Logan Ryan. Good stuff for the uh, for the team here. Any defensive touchdowns? I would doubt it, but maybe Adoree Jackson got in the end zone. He did not. Fifth offense in the league, which is odd for a 7-9 team. 23rd defense. That's what it is. Got to improve defensively as Mahomes wins back-to-back -back MVPs. Mariota at number 5. AFC Offensive Player of the Year is Patrick Mahomes. Mariota at number 2. Defense player of the year is Dante Hightower. No Titans. Offensive rookie of the year is Emmanuel Hall. Made the decision to play him at number three instead of Tajay Sharp and uh, Taiwan Taylor. So he played a lot. And then defensive rookie of the year is Mac Wilson. Jalen Jelks at number three. No Christian Wilkins. Sad. I don't really want anyone in free agency. I don't know how Damian Harris keeps getting in here. Like, he's a rookie. Or was. And now he's a one-year player with star development in an 84 overall. And he just gets cut. Very bad. We pick in the top 10. I don't care who goes number one overall. Because uh, I'm very self-centered. I only care about the Titans now. I think we're going Chase Young here. He's a player I was hoping would be on the board when we picked. And here he is. So I am taking him. Chase Young. 78 overall with star development. You play outside linebacker now. So, learn the position. Thank you. Kendrick Rogers is here in the second round. That tempts me. But then there's an offensive lineman that could help out our team and then start right away. So, I am going to do that. I'm going to value offensive line a little bit more highly. 75 overall star development. We will find a spot for him. Kendrick Rogers is still available. Well, I'm in. I'm in, clearly. He's a 74 overall, quick development, but so is Emmanuel Hall, and he won Offensive Rookie of the Year, and he went off. 14 touchdowns over 1,000 yards. Maybe Kendrick Rogers is Emmanuel Hall. No, 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 not the next. Maybe he is. Sutton Smith is here. Very underrated player. Kind of a monster. Like, this guy's numbers this year are incredible. Hold on. All right, he has 15 sacks this year. Is that 15 or 16? I don't know, I added up quickly, including six in his last two games. Granted, he's not playing an amazing competition. Buffalo, Western Michigan, but four sacks against Western Michigan. Two last week against Buffalo, or I guess not last week, but in November. So kind of a while ago. Whatever. He had a crazy season. Two sacks against Utah. Utah was good this year, regardless. Two or one against Florida State. They're not great this year, but anyway... Point being, he's a super underrated player. He has star development, 74 overall. Nice to see him represented well in the class. 80 speed, 80 tackle, 86 finesse moves. All right. Ah, uh, there goes little Jordan. Bengals love themselves some Texans players. Texas Longhorns. Malik Jefferson. Jackson Shipley. Or, well, at least Jordan Shipley. I think Jackson Shipley went to the Bengals as well. Yikes. Jackson Shipley was only on the Cardinals practice squad. Jordan Shipley was 100% drafted by the Bengals. And he was on them from 2010 to 2011. So I just named three. Beat that. Ooh, Chase Young, 72 overall outside linebacker. 
That's what you like to see. I want to go 4-3, but I, I can't figure out how it would work based on personnel. It would leave one person as the odd man out. It would probably be Daquan Jones, who is a good player. He's 28. He'd be who I trade. I'm, I am now down to trade Daquan Jones to transition to a 4-3, where our team, I think, would be much better. So I'm doing that. Jarrell Casey makes more sense as a defensive tackle. That's the play. He goes up to an 88 overall. We still have Christian Wilkins. Daquan Jones is going to go. Chase Young will start at... Well, what's the scheme fit? At, at right and left end. Is it power rusher? Is it power rusher? Ooh, it's not. Speed rusher. That's going to be Harold Landry. And that was, was that left end? Man, I didn't read. I didn't read it. Uh, Harold Landry should be a speed rusher. He is. You play, I think it's left end. It was not left end. It was right end. All right. Well, he's going to play right end then, clearly. He's an 84 overall right end. And that's going to go up to an 85 when we use that skill point. So we're in business on that front. Our team, I know what you're thinking. It's gotten worse. It hasn't. It's just, it's changed a lot. Emmanuel Hall is up to an 81 overall. That is sweet. And you know what? No, nah, I'm not going to change Kendrick Rogers to tight end, but I do want to. I am going to put Taewon Taylor. I, I say Taiwan sometimes. I don't know what it is. I'm going to put him on the trade block, and I'm also going to put Daquan Jones on the trade block. They no longer have value to me. Rashawn Evans is also going to be moved to right outside linebacker to fit the new scheme. I think that will work quite well. Jayon Brown just doesn't fit the mold as an outside linebacker with his super low pass rush moves. Rashawn Evans has got to be better because it, it can't be having the best one in the 50s. Let's see here. 70? Yeah, way better. Ooh, Malcolm Butler. Down to a 77. That's terrible. All right, please give me a second round pick. So they only want Daquan Jones. Very sad for Taiwan Taylor. Uh, they're offering Trey Flowers. I would rather have the second round pick, honestly. I don't know why. Trey Flowers is probably better, but I'm, I want the second. We're just going to keep Taylor. I don't know. Like, I was getting kind of ahead of myself with these rookie receivers. Kendrick Rogers will be a good four for us right now. That's all he needs to be. We need a starting center, probably. Ooh. Not a lot of great guys in free agency, as I'm sure you guys are shocked to find. Remember you're telling me in preseason, free agency isn't loaded with talent? But yes, it appears to be that way. I'm also going to change Sutton Smith. He has star development. There's got to be a way we can use him. What is his overall at right end? Hopefully, like, 77, 78. Give him some good value to us. 76? Yeah, I'll take it. Specialist. Well, Rashawn Evans is not going to be the rush left end. I can tell you that right now. I'll tell you that for free. Like, why would Rashawn Evans be the rush end over Chase Young? That's what we drafted him to do. Be a rush defensive end. I have no idea. Regardless of that, the team looks pretty good. Outside linebacker could be better with Jalen Jelks, but that's fine, I guess. And then offensively, just offensive line and still being mediocre is kind of what's holding us back. Just in general. Here is the team for season. This is number three, I believe. You know what? Not bad. Defensively, I think we're pretty good. The team's only going to continue to get better. Some of them got uh, extra skill points for preseason, so the team is better than it was. Very, very slightly from when you last saw it. I'm going to put Emmanuel Hall back to uh, our slot receiver over Taiwan Taylor because he was just so good last year. Why would I take that opportunity away again when he could be so good this year? So we'll keep, we're will going to keep him there. We'll keep him there. Four and three at the midseason mark. Dory Jackson is an impending free agent. I mean, we got some skill points here and there. Adore Jackson, Corey Davis, Tywin Taylor, J.M. Brown, all free agents. I'm going to... I'm going to re-sign 
all these guys. So we brought back Adoree Jackson, Corey Davis, Taewon Taylor, Jayon Brown. I have no need for Jonathan Cyprian. But we re-signed Jonu Smith because we don't have any other tight end. Not that he'll certainly be the starter, because I probably will look to improve upon him in the offseason. But he is that guy number uh, number one for us right now. So I don't usually update you guys on the scouting, but I think we really do need to get a cornerback, potentially even a strong safety or a free safety. Xavier McKinney could be an option out of Bama. Obviously, you guys know I love Caden Stearns out of Texas at cornerback. Uh, Patrick Sertan, number one corner in the class. Although, um, I don't know. We'll have to see how he plays at Bama. I know at the... Uh, like the Nike showcase, he got torched, and that was like a year ago or so. Uh, Sante Samuel Jr., another junior there, but we'll see. If we do at a we get a cornerback. Patrick Sertan, currently number one. Dylan Moses, another Bama guy. It's all Bama guys. I need another linebacker. Could go Jacob Phillips. Could go, uh, you know, let's go back to middle linebacker here. Could go David Woodward. I'm not 100% sure yet. Also, could use an interior offensive lineman. Haven't quite decided who we're gonna get. But uh, you guys will know as soon as I do. Time to simulate now to the playoffs. We are 4-3. and three, Currently in the hunt. In the race for the playoffs. We're not out of it. Just got to win a bunch of games here. And we'll be in easy, obviously. And that's kind of exactly what we did. We finished 9-7. and seven, Which won the AFC South, surprisingly enough. Marcus Mariota. Let's see here. You know, decent little season. 20 touchdowns is not a lot for a quarterback, but I got to like only six interceptions. We didn't really do too much on the ground, and then receiving Emmanuel Hall was pretty incredible for us again, which is a little bit surprising, but he, you know, performed awesomely. I got to give it to him. Defensively, Jayon Brown led our team in tackles. Six sacks, or excuse me, six tackles for loss, two and a half sacks, pretty good season. Jarrell Casey worked out great as a defensive tackle. And then sacks are kind of low, but Harold Landry led the team with nine. Chase Young, Christian Wilkins both at five and a half. And then interceptions, Dory Jackson continuing his great, great career here in this franchise with five picks again. Love to see that. 23rd ranked offense, and we had the 21st defense. Not great. Middle of the pack. Kind of surprised we made the playoffs, but Phillip Rivers won the MVP 11-4-1. and one. We're the Chargers. No Titans in there. AFC Office Player of the Year is Phillip Rivers. Marcus Mariota in there at number nine. Defense Player of the Year is Anthony Hitchens. Adore Jackson at six for Defensive Player of the Year and Jayon Brown at 10. Offensive Rookie of the Year went to Najee Harris. No Titans and Defensive Rookie of the Year. Chase Young in there at number four. It went to TJ Carter. No other Titans. We're also not going to jump in this season because we will be doing it next season. So we'll see if we can beat the Chiefs. And advance to the next round of the playoffs. And no, 23-16 is the final. In back-to-back -back years, the Kansas City Chiefs eliminate us from playoff contention. Hate to see it, but we are going out into free agency. We're going to get better. And Jonathan Cyprian will not be a part of that as the Rams beat the Chargers in the Super Bowl. 35 to, what did I say, 13? Something like that. Christian McCaffrey's here. That tempts me a lot. Samson Abukam's also another tempting player. Nobody wants either of these top running backs. And that's crazy. Philip Lindsay is older than Christian McCaffrey. I know, obviously, what happened there is Philip Lindsay was a, a four-year player at Colorado, at least, you know, probably graduated as a senior. And then Christian McCaffrey entered as a junior. So, interesting, though. That's two years seems like a lot. David Njoku rejected my contract, as did Forrest Lamp and Nikhil Roby Coleman, but Christian McCaffrey and Andre Howe both accept... So Christian McCaffrey will be our starting running back. It'll be a really nice combo of Thunder and Lightning with Derrick Henry and Christian McCaffrey, respectively. And then the defense side of the ball, we need an upgrade to strong safety. I told you Kenny Vaccaro was going to be a backup, as much as I love him. Like, it just wasn't going to be realistic that a player getting to be into his 30s, like Kenny Vaccaro is going to be at a low overall with not fantastic development, was ever really going to be our answer at the position. So we had to get better. We had to get younger. I think that's what we did with Andre Hal. We at least got better. Slightly younger. But we're going into the draft. I am looking for outside linebacker, potentially, cornerback, and offensive line. Center or guard. Either would do the trick. Emmanuel Hall has a bunch of points. Let's get into the draft. I might... I, I'm not going to take a receiver. I'm not going to do that. We pick at number 21 overall. Should be able to take a decent player. 
I'm going with David Woodward here at a Utah State. They produced Bobby Wagner, so this is another good linebacker from them. 76 overall star development. He will be moving to outside linebacker, as I believe I'm going to keep Jay on Brown at inside linebacker. We pick at number 13 here in the second. This is the pick that we acquired when we traded Daquan Jones. So we'll see what we can make of it. I'd like to take offensive line with this pick, preferably a center if there's a good one available. And there doesn't really appear to be, but Asante Samuel Jr., 464 speed. Is that a joke? No way. All right, I'm going to start off with Michael, either Menet or Manet here out of Penn State. Obviously, you don't hear the offensive lineman uh, names get called too often, so I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce it. He's a 76 overall with quick development, good enough to start at center for us. And I think I'm going to come back for that other center and potentially move him to offensive guard where I think he profiles pretty well. And his name is, I don't remember offhand, Lloyd Cushenberry out of LSU. 6'4", 309 pounds. Welcome to the Tennessee Titans, 75 overall quick development. The one thing I don't love about these Thomas drafts is there don't appear to be any, like, busts or gems. It feels like players are basically ranked based on their overall, and it's down the list. And as, you know, the further you go the worse they get, which in theory is how it works, but in, uh, you know, practice, of course, it doesn't work like that. There are always steals, there are always busts, as we're going to take a corner here. Sean Wade out of Ohio State, another 4-6 speed guy. Like, how can you be that good? 87 speed? It's just not, it's just not great speed now, is it? It's going to be the end of the draft, though. We need a backup quarterback. But here is the team. It looks pretty good, actually. The offensive line's okay. I don't love that Jonu Smith is still our starting tight end. And I don't love that we have a lot of unproven, not great players on the offensive line, to say the least. Two of these guys, you can almost say they look identical. Despite having very different last names. But Emmanuel Hall is up to an 87. He's absolutely been crushing it in this. Only quick development still. But he's incredible, except he can't run a short route for anything. Which, whatever, go deep. I don't care. Defensively, I said Woodward is going to slide out to outside linebacker, so we are going to do that. Star development is pretty good. Like, I like star development a lot because it makes these players get really good really fast. It isn't superstar because that makes them great really fast, but it is good for us. I like what it does for us. He goes up to a 78 overall. Andre Hale is new. At cornerback, I wish we got better, but we couldn't. Defensive line still good. Regression is hitting Jarrell Casey hard, but Harold Landry's getting a lot better. And I guess this will be the final season, I would guess. We could try to make a trade to land a tight end. Don't usually do a lot of trading in these realistic rebuilds, but... Like, Dexter Lawrence, we could send him on the move. Maybe Sutton Smith package something in for a tight end. But I think what would be more likely is trading a pick for a tight end. Make a budget trade for a veteran star like Rob Gronkowski, maybe. So Gronk is here. Rob Gronkowski would be an interesting addition to our squad. Are there any other great tight ends from around the league that I would consider grabbing? How about 31-year-old Travis Kelsey? This could be a fun one. I'll give you a first-round pick. They don't really have interest in that. Okay, I'm going to try to get Gronk. I think that might be the easiest one. Or the most doable one. Not that this is easy. Do you get any of these players? He's 32. Is there interest here? Potentially. All right, here is the trade. A first-round pick, Derrick Henry, and a fourth-round pick for Rob Gronkowski. I think this is going to make our offense a lot better. We have Deion Lewis as a backup. Christian McCaffrey, we brought in, of course, in the offseason to be that bell cow running back for us now. So that'll work out pretty well. Karan Higdon is also here, as is Gus Edwards. It's a pretty decent team. I think Gronk just brings us to the next level. Hopefully, we'll make our offense even better. And in free agency, as I mentioned before, I do want to sign um, Justin Coleman's here. We're going to sign him for cornerback depth. I do want to sign a backup quarterback just to have one because I know they do come in and play. And I think let's take the best backup quarterback ever. <laughs> Nick Foles, what a beast. Josh Allen got cut. <laughs> oh, boy. What up, Bills fans? Madden? No, that, that's pretty unrealistic. Um, I mean, you never know. Jamarcus Russell got cut within like three years. But this is the team for the final season. I think it's pretty good. I like it. Not the best team we've ever built, obviously. But certainly not the worst. And maybe, 
just maybe, we'll have a shot to make the playoffs again. All right, this is a last ditch effort. We're gonna upgrade the team and we're gonna try to do anything we can to make the playoffs. We are currently three and four. Not exactly what I would call in playoff contention at the bottom of the ASC South. However, we're not out of it yet. We are not. And especially the way second halves usually go for us. Usually they go quite well. And we um, we win out almost. Like, not win out, win out. But, like, we win a lot of our second half games. That's just kind of the way it seems to operate in franchise a lot. Also, with the upgrading the players, that helps in franchise. But this, as I said, is the last ditch effort to make the playoffs here in season number whatever i might go week by week and just upgrade and try to secure anything we can to get these wins as we improve to four and four show me five and four big win over the jags five and four big win over the jags and just like that we hop from last to second to last great effort no everyone's five and four so the ac south is certainly up for grabs you could say six and four now Beat the Jets. Go seven and four, please. Six and five. Everyone is six and five. We lost by a field goal. Oh. Seven and five now. Two teams are seven and five. Two wins in a row would be huge for us. Unfortunately, we're faced with the most overpowered team in sim history, but we beat them. We advanced to eight and five. Barely beating the Chargers. Oh boy. It's starting to become a, rea a reality. Nine and five now. We're still not out of the woods yet. Nine and six. That's bad. The Jaguars and Texans played each other, though, and they tied. We got mashed by the Colts, who are also still very much in the race. And we finish against the Browns. The Browns are 10 and five. The Browns are good. This is not a good matchup for us. This is a must-win game, and I don't know if we're going to win it. Ten wins would make us at least get the wild card game, and we do. We beat the Browns. We win the division. Here's the problem. We got to play the Browns again. They might be looking for vengeance. We will hop in now. <laughs> Marcus Mariota, great season. Top four in the league in passing yards. Also 30 touchdowns now. Plus 10 to his previous total. And, you know, it's got to be Nick Foles. What a season. Three touchdowns, no picks. Five attempts. Like, what a monster. Uh, are those fake field goals? <laughs> like, what? what is going on there? I don't know. But rushing, Christian McCaffrey, he played pretty well. 1,100 yards, 8 touchdowns, 4.3 per carry. Gronk was huge in our success. Let our team in catches. 959 yards, 12 touchdowns. Corey Davis, Taiwan Taylor, great. Emmanuel Hall went from beast to nothing with the addition of Gronk. Like, oh my god, he's down to normal development. Look at these numbers for Emmanuel Hall. Check this out. Rookie year. 1,000 yards, basically 1,100 on 72 catches, 14 touchdowns. Comes back the next season. More yards. Touchdowns get half, but still 7's good this year. Yards are halved, lower catches, average per game, plummets, no touchdowns. Brutal for Emmanuel Hall. Hate to see it, but that is what it is. Offensive line performed fairly well. Defensively, Jayon Brown again, a pretty good season, nothing crazy. Christian Wilkins had a great, great season. 12 tackles for loss, 10 sacks, 11 tackles for loss for Rashawn Evans. Nine for David Woodward, who had 10 sacks coming off the edge at left outside linebacker. Harold Landry led our team, though, with 12 and a half. Chase Young, it seems to be a run stopper. Like, that's what the position is, I guess, but he's not getting after the quarterback. He has ridiculously big arms. What the hell? <laughs> oh, my God. They're like the Dwayne The Rock Johnson here. Uh, but he has 94 power moves, so, like, that's a product of simulation stats not being that great, unfortunately. And then interception. Jayon Brown had four. Did that lead the team? Yes, it did. Dory Jackson picked up two. We had the seventh best offense in the NFL. And the tenth defense. So overall, we should have been a playoff team. We barely made it. Ezekiel Elliott wins MVP. Marcus Mariota at number seven. ASC Offense Player of the Year is Sam Darnold. Titans, Marcus Mariota at number five. Defense Player of the Year, Miles Garrett. No Titans. Offensive Rookie of the Year, Justin Fields with the Chargers. No Titans and defensive rookie of the year. Baron Browning, David Woodward finishes at number three. All right. Here we go. Cleveland Browns. We're better. Let's win. We're down 28 0. What the? 35 0? Did we come to play today? We're at home. Oh my God. I'll try to come back, I guess. I don't. Is it worth it down five touchdowns? 
Mariota just completed his eighth pass. He has three interceptions. That was the first pass to Corey Davis that was completed. How is that possible? What is going on here? Well, that's a ridiculous overthrow. It wasn't a great decision regardless. It's fourth and two. That's wide open. Thankfully, we're not sacked. Emmanuel Hall down the sideline. Continues his great rebuild for some reason or franchise or career. Ah, Don Beebe came out of retirement. He's playing wide receiver for us. I didn't even notice. That's great. Oh, can't throw that one. It's just a field goal does us absolutely no good. We're going to try to throw that. Mariota sneak it in. Why did Emmanuel Hall not go for that? Jabril dove like through the back. 58-yard field goal? No way. It's got to be open. Taylor, hold on. Thank you. 10 seconds to go. Running a lot of verticals. I don't know what you else or what you would expect on third and 20, fourth and 20, whatever that ended up being. We have one timeout. I like slants. I don't really know how to score in this game. How about Marcus Mariota? How about it? Ooh, down to the one. I'm going for it. You better believe. Dude, they're giving us the middle here. We just need blocking. Christian McCaffrey will have an easy touchdown. We got it. All right. Thank you for the... He's saluting because the video's over. You know, take it easy. See you in the next one. All right. Is the game seems to be over. Just score. It's over. Dude. It's 49-7. How is it like turnover after turnover after turnover after turnover? Hopefully we just win some jump balls. Oh my God, Emmanuel Hall. That would have been disgusting. All right, 49 to 7. You know what? I still believe. I think we can do it. Yeah, I mean, like, you know, I didn't really have a chance at any point in this game. We'll step up on the run. Hopefully, Christian McCaffrey burns him. He actually caught that. That's pretty amazing. Play action. Give me a block here. Wanted to throw to Emmanuel Hall. We're going to redirect. We're going to throw that to Corey Davis. Oh, my God. He caught that? Dude, I swear, the new, uh, the new update screwed with aggressive catching because I've been getting more of them than ever in Giants franchise. They still drop like easy catches somehow, but they'll catch those. It's kind of wild. And we have like one of the best jump ball, honestly, players of all time in Rob Gronkowski. I wanted to throw it up. We're going to roll out though. They're very fast. High point to Gronk. Aggressive. All right. I don't even know why I'm playing. The game's over. I'm simulating to the end. Maybe after a touchdown. I want to score. Fourth and goal. Christian McCaffrey. Stopped at the one. All right. Well, I don't know what you do there. It was an open hole, clearly. But that is the game. That is our playoff run. I said the Browns were going to come back with a vengeance. That is... Don't do that. Who told you that was a good idea? Look at that neck beard. That's terrible. Don't do that. If you're watching this and you have some of that, uh-uh. Uh-uh. Don't do it. You're not doing yourself any favors. I'm telling you. I don't like terrible. All right. Well, as I'm sure I've insulted my uh, Amish demographic. Well, I guess you wouldn't be watching the video if you're Amish. So we're we're in the clear. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.